You know, it's 2022, I'm leaving the US and I'm feeling so hopeful. Omicron's hitting, yeah, but I'm think I'm saying to myself, maybe this is the end of the pandemic and 2022 is gonna be our, our year. It's gonna be our year, guys. And then suddenly there's drones flying over nuclear bases here in Sweden and Sweden's moving troops into Gotland because Russia's planning on invading. Hey guys, what's going on? Andrew coming at you. And in this one, I thought we'd talk about what's going on between Russia and Sweden right now. Would Sweden ever possibly join NATO and the overall possible conflict between the Ukraine and Russia? So about a week ago now, there was a drone spotted over a nuclear power plant here in Sweden, and then later reported at other nuclear power plants seemingly around the same time. <laughs> Now the first thing I have to say is even just hearing that video, it is always adorable listening to a little kid speak Swedish. And yes, I do think it could possibly have been a galaxy. An interesting thing is later in the week, there were also drones spotted over Stockholm. Now the interesting thing about the drone in this video and what the others reported were very bright lights. I saw one of a photo of one in Stockholm that was also a bright light. And so if you feel like it's possibly Russia, for example, I mean, if they wanted to have covert drones where you wouldn't spot them, you wouldn't even know they were here looking over your bases or looking over your nuclear power plants or looking over vulnerable areas such as the King's Palace in Sweden. But having these drones with the spotlights on it seems to send a message that, hey, we are in vulnerable spots and we're not afraid to show you. Most countries would see a foreign country having drones over these areas as an act of war. Over the week, that same time where the drones were spotted, there was activity in the Baltic Sea with Russia that prompted Sweden to move troops into Gotland. Sweden is reinforcing its military presence on the island of Gotland, which is the closest part of the country to Russia. It comes after talks between NATO, the United States and Moscow failed last week. Although Sweden is not a NATO member, it's a close ally of the military alliance. The island is strategically located in the Baltic Sea and the EU Baltic states all share a border with Russia. Tensions between Ukraine and Moscow are rising after the talks failed. Now, Gotland is an island off of Sweden that has a good strategic location for a country such as Russia, which is really kind of landlocked and, and also kind of sea locked as well. And any power that they can get in the sea, any more power they can get, anything that can help them move militarily is important, and Gotland would be seen as a very strategic location. Meet Michael Biden, Sweden's top general. He spends a good part of his time wondering just what the Russians are up to. It's too much to say that we understand. Did we understand or did we know uh, before it happened in uh, the annexation of Crimea? Did we understand that they were very close to start something Eastern Ukraine? When we see it, when it's happened, it's obvious. It's there and, and it's logic. But it's too much to say that we know what the next step would be. This is, this is one of the, the great challenges right now. What are they up to and why do they do it? Now, I have lived in Sweden for many years now, and there has always been tension between Sweden and Russia, which is interesting because Sweden has always historically been neutral. It has been a country that has been neutral for a very long time, even up during World War II. On the outbreak of the Winter War between Finland and the Soviet Union in November 1939, Sweden declared itself to be non-belligerent in regard to this particular conflict, actively siding with Finland. It wasn't directly involved, but due to the fear of the Soviet aggressors, some help was sent to their Finnish neighbors. Around 180 Swedes joined the German Waffen-SS. It was always the individual's choice to enlist. However, the government also helped in ways such as sending food, ammunition, weapons, and medicine to Finland during conflict. While the number of Swedish volunteers was comparatively small to some other nations, the country's willingness to help in the war effort surely points to its obvious lack of neutrality. Even if official government policy stated the country was in a non-belligerent position, the actions of people in a nation are what ultimately reveal the true nature of the attitudes. And these undeniably show Swedish refusal to sit on the sidelines and do nothing. Unlike its neighbors Norway and Finland, Sweden stayed relatively neutral during the war and was able to get out of World War II basically unscratched and without taking much damage. 
And since then, Sweden has always tried to stay historically neutral. So it's interesting that a country such as Russia would be provoking Sweden in this way. But it's also important to point out that although Sweden is a neutral country, it has definitely been buddy-buddy with the United States for many years now. They have run many military drills together. They have worked together. Sweden has purchased Black Hawk helicopters from them. And they have definitely probably shared technology with each other. And they share a relationship, but just not one on paper. With all this said, though, Sweden has kind of stayed out of things between Russia and the United States and kind of does its own thing. So it is interesting that Russia is doing this. Um, I can say that I've been in Sweden for many years now, and there's always been a tension between Russia and, and Sweden. Um, uh, Russia would always kind of send fighters every once in a while to see how close they could get, and then they would get intercepted and they would go back. Uh, and then there was just a, a few years ago, for those of you that uh, don't remember this, or those that do, there was a, a Russian sub that was spotted in Stockholm that the military tried to find that they could not find, but there were many witnesses that had seen it. Somewhere underneath these waves, the Swedish government believes an intruder lurks, perhaps a Russian submarine, raising the specter of a wounded nuclear sub in these waters and a potential crisis. And I remember this being an interesting time as well, and also not cool that they would have a Russian sub that close to, the, to Sweden. I'm sure Sweden wasn't happy about that. With all that said, I would say this new activity that we have seen from Russia is the most aggressive that I have seen and the most stressed I've seen people in Sweden about anything before. Would Sweden ever consider joining NATO or could with Russia's recent aggression, and if they continue to keep doing things, could it push Sweden to join NATO? This is interesting because I feel like Sweden is already an ally of the United States and other countries that they would probably come in and help either way uh, and would not be cool with a neutral country uh, getting invaded. And with that said, culturally, I've always felt like Swedes are very proud of being neutral and would do whatever they would take to not be in NATO for as long as they could possibly do it. But I will, I will say there is a section of people that are here in Sweden that would like to join NATO and have that protection that they think it is time and think that it's always happened. I just think it's more of a minority than a majority. But I think if, if Swedes would continue to keep getting pushed and continue to keep having things that are unsettling, let's say, I don't know, a uh, warship off the coast of uh, Gotland or something like that, or I don't know, fighters flying too close into Sweden or something that we've seen as aggressive, then yes, I think they could be provoked into joining NATO. But I don't think they're necessarily looking for it. And I'm not sure if it would be a good thing because the negative thing about Sweden joining NATO, especially right now, let's say if Sweden joined NATO right now, it would only add fuel to the fire between Russia and the United States and Russia and NATO right now because Russia definitely doesn't want another country to join NATO because they're gonna see that as a threat as well. For the current moment, I do think that Sweden is safe, but I think their military has to be on guard. I mean, put it this way, uh, I think that Sweden has a very advanced military, but I don't think that they could hold up from a Russian invasion longer than a week because I think there could be, I, I just my opinion, because what are you going to do, fight these major battles? Are you going to fight a battle that you can't win uh, with such a massive loss of life? It's, it's what I'm also thinking about with the possibility of what's going to happen in Ukraine. But one thing I'll say about the Swedish people is Swedish people very rarely I ever see get super stressed. And I will say this recent stuff with Russia is the most stressed I've seen people about something in a while and uh, they've not been cool with it. And uh, that's been interesting to see and interesting to see that many people are taking these recent threats from Russia very seriously. And that goes on in the last part. And I think this is why people are so stressed because if Russia invades Ukraine, this would just be horrible for everybody. This would be horrible for Europe and just, the more I think about the possible devastation, it's just terrible. And I try to look at things from both sides. So I can look at things from Russia's side and I can see how Russia can be frustrated that the US was able to invade Iraq even though the world said, do not do it. We didn't face like huge sanctions or anything like that and everybody just was okay and cool with it. Uh, Russia wasn't cool that that happened. And then also you got the United States talking to Ukraine, being buddy-buddy with Ukraine and possibly talking about them joining NATO with Russia is not going to be cool with that because we have to understand with Russia, and this is something that's very, very important to point out, that Russia has always been attacked from Europe and they have always been like very vulnerable to attack just based on their geography. So they've always liked to have a couple countries as a buffer. And uh, when the Soviet Union collapsed, they lost a lot of these countries and NATO didn't necessarily completely go away. 
and it we're kind of back to where we are and it's really interesting because it's almost like the United States and Russia are the reason that Ukraine is going to go to war in general like the idea of NATO in this and it kind of feels like you got two old guys doing something in an old way this is just how I feel I feel like Putin's old school and you know I think Biden is like the status quo like old school what we have in the US and they're handling everything in this old school mentality in a time where there's no more Soviet Union anymore. And the thing that's frustrating about it from my perspective is that Ukraine has modern, we, we've never seen two countries with these types of modern weapons go to war before. It would be devastating for Russia on losses. They're gonna lose a lot of fighter planes and things are gonna go down. They got high tech weapons to take them out of the sky. Ukraine's gonna lose a lot of people and then Ukraine would ultimately lose from Russia. And if they put up a huge fight, there could be a devastating loss of life that like we've never seen before. We've never seen these type of weapons going at them at the same time in, in Europe. I mean, if, just to think about it happening in 2022 is so frustrating to me uh, as nations like the United States and Russia can't and the EU can't find a way to like sit down and talk and be normal <laughs> and find a way to trade and be beneficial to each other without this old school mentality of, oh, we might going to keep fighting each other over I our ideas and stuff. It's just, I guess it's annoying to me that in 2022 that we're still fighting about this kind of stuff. It's like, I want to go fly and explore space and see some cool stuff out there and like be together as a species and like survive and like be able to fly off this planet and go to another planet. And we're arguing about this stuff in 2022, right after a pandemic. And I just hope that all at all costs war can be ended. And maybe the U S can do some things that can deescalate. And so can Russia. And I, I, I try to look at things from both sides. Maybe the U S should be like, okay, we'll just stop d talking with Ukraine. We'll be completely out of their business. If you just don't go in, and then that stops. And yes, I don't know. Maybe that means Russia ultimately can try to get into the Ukraine politically or do something else. But if they don't do it militarily, I think that would be a good thing. And I got to tell you, the, the U.S. attitude, in my opinion, is Americans are tired. They do not want another conflict. And although Americans think NATO is important, there are a lot of people that would back up NATO and see the importance of it. I would say that 50% of the country, they probably don't not that they don't care, but like they don't care enough to like send troops there or fight again or get into another conflict. You know, Americans are kind of tired of that at the moment. So there's just the, it wouldn't be good politically for the United States to get that heavily involved at the moment. So we'll have to see what happens, but that's just my opinion. And uh, I hope you guys like this one. Uh, if you do like sometimes when I talk about more current events of things happening in Sweden, this is something I'm considering doing more longer term, uh, you know, doing something like this once a week, more news and things happening here in, in Sweden. Uh, then uh, let me know in the feedback in the comments. And I will see you guys in the next video. Hey, do.